The agenda 2063 for the Renaissance of Africa will only be successful if you can succeed in investing in our youth. That investment in the youth can only be done through education, which, which requires that a huge mass of and substantial percentage of public expenditure should go to the education sector, especially for research, innovation, and uh, high learning. We have several reasons and several convincing examples why we should invest in education. Korea, Singapore, China have invested in education and have liberated their people not only from the evils of ignorance and poverty, but also have become a model that others are emulating now. However, it's not enough that we invest in education. We should invest in quality education. A quality education in all sense that we make minds of the future to be innovative and to be living up to the demand of the 21st century. And this is the only way that we can make African-made products to be competitive in a global market. This is the only way that we can make and create an environment where our youth will have an opportunity to be creative, innovative, and come up with a solution for tomorrow, being today here. This will help our nations in several ways, including that Africa will fetch the proper price for its products and the proper uh, return for its investment. This can only be done by massive investment in science, by massive investment in technology. Massive investment in technology and science obviously is going to be expensive, and that would be another headache for the states, another headache for governments. And hence, we need to devise a mechanism that meager resources that exist in Africa and across the globe could be optimally utilized for the best for our future. Some will find that quality and access in education cannot be achieved at the same time. Yes, it's true. When we have to expand education and when we have to expand public services, similarly, we may have to compromise on quality for a while. But thanks to technology, we have several solutions for it. In education, I speak about education because I'm from <laughs> Ministry of Education, India. In education, school nets and ethernets have proved to be a very instrumental tools that we can achieve both and twin goals of increasing access as well as quality in our education system. Having implementing school net in our education system, we have reached out to millions in Ethiopia and now we enroll about a quarter of our population in the education system. 22 million of them being in uh, primary and secondary schools. This has helped a lot, not only in terms of increasing access, but also improving quality because we have worked on the content of the courses and we have worked on the capacity of the teachers to able to access resources, able to utilize these resources for the best of the classroom uh, interactions. E-learning as a project in Ethiopia was also implemented in Ethernet, which is the Ethiopian Education and Research Network project. This project was conceived at the time when we first launched 
a massification in higher education back in 2001. By then, we had only eight universities. The original plan was to connect these eight universities to the state of art technology so that our professors, researchers, and academia can share resources, can collaborate in research, and access to uh, the ocean of knowledge in the world. That has given some results so far. Our universities now conducted an experiment with this project and were able to graduate engineers from IIT via this uh, technology. IIT Delhi, we had a program for construction management and railway engineering that we, ma we managed to have graduates in this area. In investing in education, we'll make sure that Africa will be a home not only for uh, the bricks and mortar technologies and industries of the modern world. We should also invest so that we're creating an environment where the youth can innovate technologies, where we'll have the next apps made in Africa, the next technologies coming from Africa. Investment in resources, labs, laboratories, and the rest can only be justified if we can exploit the best for our nation, nurture the talent and huge potential of our uh, current use. The key focus for the education system here in Ethiopia move to more than to move to improve math and science, which will be key for studying science and technology at the latter uh, years of their schooling. This has to start at early grades. The math and science skills laboratories have to be established. Math and science need to have its own strategy as to how this will be implemented in the schools. Enrolling 70% of our uh, tertiary education students in science and technology, the government of Ethiopia hoped that this is the only way we can transform an agriculture-dominated economy to a vibrant industrial economy. This science and technology would pave a way to attract foreign as well as improve the performance of local industries to compete at the global market. We have done this in lieu of being a hub for a manufacturing sector in the years to come, tomorrow. In addition to some of these activities being undertaken in science and technology, our universities are doing a lot to nurture the talent and entrepreneurial capacity of their students. Now, the, the universities have a business incubation center where students experiment that their idea can hold water in the real world, where their ideas can be feasibly commercialized technically uh, produced and can make a difference when used by the society. And this will give graduates an opportunity not to wait for jobs to come in arts, rather to make their own businesses, to be employers than being employee for others. Participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's my belief that presentations, experiences, discussions, and conferences that will come will enrich our knowledge, also sharpen our thoughts, and venture new areas in this uh, continent. The talent that every humankind is endowed with only waits for a time and opportunity 
to unleash. Therefore, it's, a government, it's the government responsibility to avail this opportunity for our uh, younger brothers and sisters. Governments have to invest in science and technology. Governments have to invest in schools. Governments have to invest in infrastructures that will enable learning at any time, from anywhere, at the convenience of the learner. And hence, we, as implementers of government policies and projects, the ministers, I mean, have a massive responsibility, a huge responsibility that this is going the proper way. Ethiopia's government has been doing well in the past six, five years. For the past five years, the average investment in education is unparalleled to any sector. We are only second after infrastructure road. And we should continue to invest in education, research, and technology to see that our future generation would compete in a very globalized and more competitive world of tomorrow. Finally, I wish you a very productive and fruitful discussion and a pleasant stay in Addis. And thank you very much.